Well everybody, where there is death, there is life and there is death in the tree there that you can see. And it was made by Kurula, the queen. Not found by us, I would love to claim some kind of credit for this. This is entirely the work of Herbert, who's just called us in here and he's found these two, or these three beautiful leopards. Isn't that special? There she is, the youngsters around her on the ground here somewhere. And what an amazing joy this is. Brian, I still can't see the kill. Am I gone blind? In the big Scotia tree there. On the right hand fork. I'm just going to try and discover what she's killed. Ah, yes, I'm unsighted. I can see now why I couldn't see it. It looks like an, yet another diker has met its end. Looks like Georgie boy to the left there. Charlotte's just gone off into the bushes to the right hand side of your screen. Ah, marvellous. What a wonderful way to complete our drive. Let me just sneak a little bit forward. Uh, yeah, I just want to sneak slightly forward. Well, I'm going to wait for Herbert to move out first, then we'll move. It is windy, so the noises and things will probably make them a little edgy. Just wonderful. And she's not edgy in the slightest, of course, completely confident. And I think, I'm pretty sure that's George, the 3-3 three, three spot pattern. She is 3-4, like her mum. He's getting, he's getting much more muscly around his jaws these days, as old George. <laughs> Let me sneak a little bit forward. I can see Charlotte. Anna Marie, you're wondering if I notice a difference in the smell between lions and leopards. Anna Marie, no, I don't. I don't notice a difference at all. Um, I, I, don't, they, I don't think they smell of anything to me. I've no doubt they smell of a lot to their prey species, but to me, I don't smell them at all. Hyenas sometimes are a bit niffy. Uh, hyenas are sometimes massively niffy. But I don't find that lions and leopards, unless they're lying around a carcass, are smelly at all. And whether or not they smell different to their prey species, I don't know. Hello Jake in the United Kingdom. You want to know where on Juma Karula is? Well, here comes Charlotte. Um, Jake, if you've got a, a, a Google Earth map, you can probably see... Oh look, she's going up the tree. Look at this. Look! <gasps> what a clever girl. <laughs> and here comes George. There's obviously some piece of the kill underneath there where they've been. That's fantastic. <laughs> fantastic stuff. And the wind is absolutely howling here. So, if you've got a Google Earth map, um, Jake, what you do is uh, you can find the road names, actually, and Treehouse Dam 
is about 150 meters to the left of your screen, so to the west of our position. We're on the drainage line that leads out of Treehouse Dam, Savage's track to the north of this drainage line, Treehouse Dam to the right of our drainage line. And if you don't know the road names, which you should be able to find there, if you can't, um, then we are basically in the middle southern section of Juma. Middle to south, middle to southwest section. Now, what I'm going to do, just for our last few minutes, is move a little bit so that we can possibly see these cubbies eating. And again, I know we had that Andrew Causer posted that wonderful video of the two cubs playing with each other. But again, we find them separated here. And what is this fascinating behavior that he's engaging in here? George down there is basically burying things. He's doing what leopards do. They, they often bury the stomach contents of whatever it is that's been killed. And that's what he was doing there. He seemed to be doing some kind of burying maneuver. She's up in the tree. That is definitely yet another hapless diker. Aaron, you say cat -a day once again. cat -a day is living up to its name. It certainly is, isn't it? What a day. Did you see her hiss at him there? She definitely gave him a nasty little growl as he looked up at the tree. Now, look at this. He's trying. He's thinking about going up the tree. No, he's not. He's just laying down at the base. And he's not going up the tree at the moment. He's thought better of incurring the wrath of Princess Charlotte. Wonderful luck we've had today. And Cass and Tamba, you say George is a little roly-poly. I'm not sure what you mean by that, but I can kind of get, get the idea. She is very hungry. Very hungry indeed. Again, feeding these two I don't think is any mean feat. And old Georgie boy looks on from the floor, slightly forlornly up into the tree. What a perfect, perfect way to end our little drive. Let me just confirm spot patterns. Look how strong she is. Absolutely incredible. So she's actually got four spots on her left. So she's 4-3, not 3-4 like her mum. And her fourth spot is above the other three. Now, if you don't know what I'm talking about, I'm talking about the unique spot patterns that occur um, underneath the noses of these leopards. And that's often the best way of identifying them. This is just unbelievable, eh? What a sighting. the wind is howling all around and I'm sure part of the reason this diker met its end is the strength of this wind. I drove past here yesterday, I looked into this tree very carefully and I don't think this was here, I think this was killed last night sometime. <laughs>